Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to use the Algolia crawler as a cheat code to fast data indexing. My name is Tanya Herman. I'm a product manager on the growth team at Algolia. I'm based in Seattle area in the United States. I've been with Algolia for over three and a half years and got a chance to work on multiple different projects. For example, you might be familiar with Algolia's Code Exchange, a useful developer resource. Code Exchange contains a collection of tools, apps, and integrations built by Algolia, our partners, and our amazing developer community. Currently, I'm working on the crawler, an extremely useful tool for ingesting data into Algolia. In the next few minutes, we're going to see how to easily index your data into Algolia. We will walk through a quick demo of the crawler configuration flow. And in the end of this session, we will provide a link for you to get started with the Algolia crawler. When you're looking for a fast, low code and low maintenance solution for implementing search on your website, a web crawler could be the best tool for you. Algolia crawler simplifies the data ingestion process and eliminates the need to build and maintain your own indexing pipeline. With crawler, you can quickly extract and aggregate content from HTML and non-HTML resources, such as PDF files, as well as password protected pages. In just a few minutes, you can configure your crawler, set up an automatic data updates schedule to always keep your data fresh. Ingesting your data into Algolia with crawler will serve as a first step towards building a state-of-art search experience for your users. The Algolia crawler is essentially a cheat code to fast data indexing. It is ideal for static websites and sites aggregating data from multiple sources. For example, developer documentation, personal blogs, educational and financial organization sites, and corporate websites. Today, JSON-LD is the recommended structured data format for modern websites. Crawler supports and recognizes most common JSON-LD data structure types, such as articles and products. No need to spend time writing custom data extraction functions. We are handling this for you. You can set up most common crawler configurations in the visual UI, scheduling automatic runs, setting up URL exclusion rules for specific pages or URL patterns, saving backups, setting safety checks, and so much more. Additionally, a robust code editor is available to you for handling advanced configuration needs. With the code editor, the crawler configuration can be customized to fit a wide range of use cases. And the best part is that you can get access to crawler instantly with no upfront fee. You can start experimenting right away with 10,000 free monthly crawls on our build plan. So far, developers using the Algolia crawler have valued the most how easy and straightforward was the initial setup and configuration of their crawlers. Let's jump into the Algolia dashboard and see crawler in action. Imagine having dozens or hundreds of pages of support content that your customers have to sift through to find answers to their questions. Now imagine if you could make your support content searchable with highly relevant results with just a few clicks. You can easily do this using the crawler. Let me show you how using Algolia support content as an example. So let's go to the Algolia support site. The support site contains questions and answers regarding different topics. So here you can see some popular topics on getting started with Algolia, building search UI, sending and managing your data. Then you see some categories, say, regarding different products. So here you have crawler, for example, or doc search might be familiar to some of you. So if we deep dive into the doc search category, we will see multiple, multiple articles with doc search content. So let's see how we can bring this all into Algolia in just a few minutes. Let's create and configure together our first crawler. 
We will start by logging into the Algolia dashboard, selecting data sources on the bottom left in the menu and clicking crawler. Okay, let's configure your first crawler. The first step would be to add the domain. You can add either a general domain or a subdomain of a specific area of your site. In this case, I'm going to use the subdomain support.algolia.com. So let's copy it here and add our domain. Okay, I can see the domain was added successfully. That's great. We are now prompted to verify the domain. We will need to show that we indeed own this domain and should be allowed to crawl it. And there are multiple different verification methods available to us. By adding a line of code to the website meta tag and then letting crawler verify that the code is indeed added as expected, there is also additional method. We are able to upload HTML file, copy the code, add to your website, and then click verify. Additional method would be robots.txt or DNS register as well. And additionally to all those methods, you have a default method behind the scenes that's going to check the domain of your email and the domain that you entered and see if they match. If they do, the domain will be automatically verified. I already verified previously my domain with the meta tag method and I'm going to uh, click verify now. Great, I get a success message. My domain was verified and I can continue. Now it's time to create my very first crawler. I'm going to name it support site demo, and I'm going to add my start URL, in this case, support.algolia.com. Okay, let's hit create. Great, I can see crawler was created successfully. And now on the screen, you can see that I'm running a test scroll. The test scroll is going to sample 100 URLs from the website. And this test scroll allows us to perform a quick check to see if we are able to ingest the data from our website into Algolia successfully. And if the shape of the record is matching our expectation, for larger sites, it will take longer to crawl. We'll be able to remove this limit of 100 URLs later in the next steps of our configuration. So let's see, we discovered 100 URLs and that's the limit of the test crawl. This is expected. And we were able to create 84 records and no errors were found. Notice that out of 100 URLs, we only created 84 records. We will get back to this later and figure out what could be the reason. In the meantime, I can also preview the results. So here I can see the record, example of a record that was extracted from one of the pages. And the next step for me will be to configure the rest of my crawler configuration. So I'm going to click on this button, edit configuration. Great, and you can see that there are many, many common crawler configuration that can be done here on this page with no code. And it's really easy. I can modify my start URL if I want to. Maybe I want to add another one. Maybe I want to change the start URL for my crawler. I'm actually happy with my start URL, so I'm not going to do it right now. I can also change the limit. Remember, we had 100 URLs limit, and we can either disable it completely or just change it to, let's say I want to bump it to 300 URLs, and I'm going to save my change of the configuration. I can also schedule automatic runs of my crawler to make sure that my data is always fresh and up to date. It is extremely useful, for example, if I want to schedule my crawler to run every day, I can do it. Or in this case, if I update my content and publish new articles on, let's say, Mondays and Thursdays, I'm going to schedule my crawler to run during these times. And I'm going to save my configuration. In cases where I want to exclude specific URLs, 
specific pages or URL patterns, I can use this configuration of URL exclusion rules. For example, I might want to exclude specific pattern. For example, PDF. I might only want to crawl HTML pages and no PDFs. I'm going to save this setting and from now on PDFs will be ignored. As you can see, most of the key crawler functionalities can be configured with no code. For handling advanced configuration needs, Crawler offers a robust code editor. Every change we made on the visual UI configuration page will be propagated to the code editor and vice versa. So as you can see, the changes we made, such as uh, increasing the maximum URL limit, are updated here. We can scroll down and see that we have a schedule running on Mondays and Thursdays automatically, and we are excluding PDFs. Moreover, Editor keeps the version history of every change made either in the visual UI or in the code editor. So for example, we can click on configuration history and track every change we made. So we can, for example, look at this change and we can see here highlighted exactly the change we made. We can check another one and see what exactly was changed. Okay, great. I think I'm now ready for the next step. I'm going to start the crawl with the new configurations I just finished configuring and see what results am I getting. While my crawl is running, I can see updates coming live. I can see that some URLs were successfully crawled, some were ignored. This time around, I want to go and explore why some of the URLs were ignored. What are the reasons behind them? If you remember, during our first test scroll, we had 100 URLs scrolled, but only 84 records created. Let's try to understand why. I'm going to click on monitoring, and here I can see that there are several reasons for URLs to be excluded and ignored from the crawl. So here you can see, well, it was forbidden by robots.txt. Another reason could be a redirect and page that was not found or canonical URL. All of these we can explore deeper if we want to. So I will pick, let's say, a HTTP redirect, and I want to understand, first of all, which pages were ignored and see a little bit more details about them. So for example, if I click inside, I can see that this is the page that was ignored and this is the reason, and I can learn a little bit more about how to resolve this and I have additional details as to where this page is actually redirecting me. Okay, I might want to learn a little bit more. I'm going to click here and I'm landing in our documentation. Great, I have a list of all the possible errors I could get and reasons for the URL crawl to be failed or skipped, ignored. In this case, um, let's find Let's find the error that we had. Okay, I can see it here. HTTP redirect 301, 302. This is exactly what we had. And indeed, the URL was skipped. Let's see what could be the issue. Okay, I can easily find the reason. Okay, this might occur if the new page isn't included in the crawler's actions. Huh, interesting. What's this, what should be the solution? I can see the steps I need to take in order to resolve this so I can add a missing domain and then update my path to match in the editor, in the code editor, to update the crawler configuration. Great, let's go back to crawler. I'm back in the overview page and I would like to explore it a little bit more. I see that my crawl was completed successfully and now is waiting for the next scheduled crawl. This is great. And I see all the URLs that were crawled or ignored. And here I can see my indices. And I can see that all the HTML pages from the support side were ingested into this index support side demo pages. I can also see there are articles index and product index, but they're empty. The reason is that if my support site would contain articles and products, these schema types would be recognized and stored in these indices. 
But in my case, I only had general HTML pages. At this step, I want to explore the records I got and see if the shape I was expecting for the record to be is indeed what was ingested. So I can see multiple records here and I can actually look up a specific one. I'll just pick a record. We had a page from the uh, doc search support questions. I'll just copy the title and I'll paste it here. And here we go. I can see the record in the index and I can compare it to the HTML page I had on the site and see if there are any changes I would like to make to my configuration. Once I'm satisfied, I can continue to the next step. To get back to our crawler, I'm going to go to data sources and click on crawler. And I can find my support site demo stored here. As you can see, ingesting data with crawler is a fast and easy process. Instead of taking time from your development team to build a data pipeline with Crawler, you're able to quickly ingest the data by crawling the site. So you can focus on what's most important to you, building an experience that helps connect customers to the information they're looking for. We have seen how in just a few minutes, we could index the data from our website into Algolia. Not only can you get your data into Algolia easily, but you can also update your data regularly with scheduled runs to keep your data fresh and accurate. If you want to try the Algolia crawler on your own website, click the link in the chat below and get started. You can start experimenting right away with 10,000 free monthly crawls on our build plan. So get started.